It is the secret symbol of the Illuminati, and you're a part of it, and it is uh, the all-mocking tongue. Once in the annals of Hollywood, Carey was a household name in the entertainment industry, known for his blockbuster achievements that wowed audiences everywhere. But then something changed. Carey decided to use his voice and speak his mind. I was sickened. I was sickened by the standing ovation. I felt like Hollywood is just spineless, en masse. And that's when things took a twist. So let's dig deep into the mysterious disappearance of Jim Carrey and uncover the hidden forces lurking behind the glitzy Hollywood curtain. Sadly, it appears that Carrey's iconic reign in the film industry has come to an end, so he claimed. But is everyone intrigued? Let's find out more. A comedian. Zoom out the lens and take a wild view into the amazing world of Jim Carrey, the unstoppable force of comedic talent who has left us rolling in the aisles with laughter. Known for his zany antics and larger-than-life performances, Carey has solidified his place as one of Hollywood's most sought-after and highly-paid stars. A man who can command a jaw-dropping $25 million for just one movie. That's the kind of star power Carey possesses. I smoke sounds nice. Yeah. <sighs> All right, everybody, this is a hold up. Get down to the ground, you won't get hurt. He's a rare breed of actor who can effortlessly fill theaters and draw crowds with his unique brand of humor. Some might even say he's a comedic force of nature, leaving no stone unturned when it comes to making us laugh. Carey's comedic style is a whirlwind of craziness that knows no bounds. He fearlessly dives headfirst into absurdity, embracing his inner child with an unwavering commitment to the art of comedy. Critics have described him as aggressively infantile, and gleefully uninhibited, capturing the essence of his uninhibited and delightfully crazy performances. This talented Canadian-American actor and comedian has left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. Known for his energetic and hilarious performances, Carey skyrocketed to fame in the 1960s. His journey to stardom began with a breakthrough role in the American sketch comedy series In Living Color, which earned him recognition in 1990. But it was his roles in blockbuster films like Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, The Mask, and Dumb and Dumber that truly launched him into the spotlight in 1994. Audiences couldn't get enough of his comedic genius and slapstick humor. As the year 2000 rolled in, Carey continued to captivate audiences with memorable portrayals, including the iconic Grinch in How the Grinch Stole Christmas and the outrageous comedy Me, Myself, and Irene. He also wowed viewers with his performances in Bruce Almighty, Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events, Fun with Dick and Jane, and Yes Man. Carey's versatility as an actor shone through in dramatic roles as well. He earned critical acclaim for his roles in The Truman Show and Man on the Moon, both of which garnered him Golden Globe Awards. I'd like to um, take you out or something. One of his most celebrated performances was in the psychological science fiction romantic drama Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, for which he received further accolades and nominations. Beyond the big screen, Carey has made notable appearances on television. He portrayed the memorable character Leap Day William in the sitcom 30 Rock, and even took on the role of Joe Biden in episodes of Saturday Night Live leading up to the 2020 United States presidential election. Look, here's the deal. Carey's talent extends beyond acting. He received a Grammy Award nomination for Best Spoken Word Album for Children in 2006. In 2013, he delved into children's literature with his book titled How Roland Rolls, which received the prestigious Gellert Burgess Children's Book Award. Carey continued his literary journey by co-authoring his first novel, Memoirs and Misinformation, in 2020. Through his comedic brilliance, dramatic prowess, and literary pursuits, James Carey has left an indelible imprint on the world of entertainment. His boundless energy, infectious humor, and ability to transform into a wide range of characters have solidified his status as a beloved and iconic figure in the industry. But there's more to Carey than just his comedic prowess. In his movies, he cleverly satirizes the human condition, 
aiming at our egos, insecurities, and the quirks that make us all wonderfully flawed. He fearlessly tackles the full spectrum of human nature, using his humor to explore altruism and selfishness, macho bravado, and feminine sensitivity. It's like he holds up a hilarious mirror to society, reflecting our foibles and idiosyncrasies with expert precision. Early Life Let's pull the hand of the clock a little into Carrie's early years. Carrie was born in Newmarket, Ontario, Canada, to Kathleen and Percy Carey. His mom was a homemaker, and his dad was a musician and accountant. He grew up in a Roman Catholic household with three older siblings, John, Patricia, and Rita. His family had diverse roots, with his mother having French, Irish, and Scottish heritage, and his father being of French-Canadian descent. Interestingly, their original surname was Carré. Carey's journey to comedic greatness began at a young age. When he was just eight years old, he would make faces in front of a mirror and discover his talent for impressions. By the time he turned 10, he even wrote a letter to Carol Burnett of The Carol Burnett Show, proudly proclaiming his impression mastery and expressing his desire to be on the show. He was ecstatic when he received a form letter reply in response. A fan of the legendary comedy group Monty Python, Carey was deeply influenced by their TV show, Monty Python's Flying Circus, which aired in the 1970s. In 2014, he appeared on a program called Monty Python's Best Bits, mostly, and reminisced about how a sketch called The Funniest Joke in the World had a profound impact on him, particularly the character Ernest Scribbler played by Michael Palin. According to Radio Times, Palin's performance was remarkably Carey-esque. During his early years, Carey resided in Scarborough, Ontario, which is part of metropolitan Toronto. He attended Blessed Trinity Catholic Elementary School in North York before his family relocated to Burlington, Ontario, where they lived for eight years. Carey attended Aldershot High School during that time. However, their financial situation took a downturn, and the family ended up homeless. Carey and his brother even spent months living in a tent in Charles Daly Park on the shores of Lake Ontario in Lincoln, Ontario, while the rest of the family lived in a Volkswagen van. But things started to turn around when Carey's father secured a job in the accounting department at the Titan Wheels Tire Factory in Scarborough. In exchange for living across the street from the factory, Carey and his brother worked as janitors and security guards, doing overnight shifts from 6 p.m. until the next morning. They moved back to Scarborough, where Carey attended Agincourt Collegiate Institute before ultimately dropping out of school on his 16th birthday. He began performing comedy in downtown Toronto while continuing to work at the factory. In a 2007 interview, Carey mentioned that if his showbiz career hadn't taken off, he would likely have been working at the DeFasco Steel Mill in Hamilton, Ontario. Whenever he saw the steel mills across Burlington Bay, he would imagine that those were the places where the best jobs could be found. And that's the captivating tale of Jim Carrey's early life, with its ups and downs, and the path that led him to become the comedic genius we all know and love, the sunset. In 1977, when Carrey was just 15 years old, he had his first taste of stand-up comedy. With his father's support, he put together a stage act and ventured downtown to debut at the newly opened Yuck Yucks Comedy Club. The club operated only once a week out of the basement of the 519 Community Center on Church Street. For this performance, Carey's mother selected his attire, a polyester leisure suit, inspired by the fashion on the Dean Martin Celebrity Roast. However, his conventional impersonations, suited for a more tame comedic style, fell flat in a club known for its raunchy humor. Doubts about his potential as a professional entertainer started creeping in. Looking back on Carey's disastrous stand-up debut, Yuck Yuck's owner Mark Breslin described it as being Bad Rich Little, a famous impressionist. Adding to Carey's struggles were his family's financial difficulties, which made it challenging for them to support his showbiz ambitions. Fortunately, the family's financial situation eventually improved, and they moved into a new home in Jackson's Point. With more stability in his personal life, Carey returned to the stage in 1979 with a more polished act. This led to his first paid gig, a 20-minute spot at the Hayloft Club in Scarborough. He was compensated with a reported canned $20, 
and performed alongside the Mother of Pearl performer from The Pig and Whistle. Carrie faced his fears and returned to Yuck Yucks, which had relocated to a permanent location in the fashionable Yorkville district on Bay Street. In a short period, the 17-year-old went from performing at open mic nights to securing regular paid shows, gradually building his reputation in the process. Alongside his growing popularity as an impressionist stand-up comic in the Toronto area, Carey also aimed to break into sketch comedy. He auditioned to become a cast member on NBC's Saturday Night Live for the 1980-1981 season. However, he wasn't selected by the show's new executive producer John Dumanian, who chose Charles Rocket instead. Decades later, Carey had the opportunity to host Saturday Night Live in May 1996, January 2011, and October 2014, after establishing himself as a Hollywood film star. Following his unsuccessful attempt to join Saturday Night Live, Carey took a voice acting job on The All Night Show, a local overnight program on CFMT-TV, which was branded as Multilingual Television, MTV, at the time. He performed clutch cargo-inspired bits on the show. Carey continued to perform his contortionist impressions in stand-up acts across Toronto and neighboring towns. However, in February 1981, during a performance as the opening act for the rock band Gatto at the Roxy Theatre in Barrie, Carey faced a harsh reception from the rock crowd and was booed off stage. He refused to return for the second night. Nevertheless, just two weeks later, a review of one of Carey's performances at Yuck Yucks, accompanied by a sizable photo of him doing an impression of Sammy Davis Jr., appeared on the front page of the entertainment section in the Toronto Star. The writer, Bruce Blackadar, raved about Carey, describing him as a genuine star coming to life. This significant mainstream media coverage, one of Carey's first, created a demand for his impressionist stand-up act throughout Canada. He also appeared on the televised stand-up show An Evening at the Improv in April 1981. The following summer, Carey landed one of the main roles in the made-for-TV movie introducing Janet, which premiered on the CBC network. The movie drew over a million viewers for its first airing in Canada and further solidified Carey's comedy status in the country. Due to his established prominence for his elaborate contortionist impressions, the movie's title was changed to Rubberface for its home video release on VHS. Carey also made appearances in comedy clubs in the United States, catching the attention of comedian Rodney Dangerfield, who signed him to open his tour performances. By December 1981, Carey had become a well-known comic in Canada, and the Toronto Star reported that he was awaiting a work permit in the United States. He had received interest from Johnny Carson's Tonight Show, thanks to his reputation in Canada. First appearance on American television. Would you welcome Jim Carey? Jim! In early 1982, Carey reportedly auditioned for The Tonight Show, performing for bookers Jim McCauley and Bud Robinson. Rather than being booked on the show, Carey received advice to further refine his act. He returned to the Toronto area, where he had already amassed a significant following. While touring as the opening act for Rodney Dangerfield throughout North America, Carey graced his hometown of Toronto with two sold-out shows at Massey Hall on June 19. Let's dive deeper into Jim Carey's early comedy journey, filled with ups and downs, as he pursued his dream of becoming a professional entertainer. Move to Hollywood. After catching the eye of producer Samuel Goldwyn Jr. with his stand-up comedy, Carey was offered an audition for a teen horror sex comedy being developed by the Samuel Goldwyn Company. He impressed the producers and landed a starring role in the film Once Bitten, which was shot in early 1985. Around the same time, Carey also secured a supporting part in Francis Ford Coppola's Peggy Sue Got Married. However, the latter film went through a lengthy post-production process, delaying its release. Carey decided to take another shot at joining the cast of Saturday Night Live, SNL. This time, Lorne Michaels, the executive producer of SNL, was preparing for the show's 1985-1986 season and was seeking an all-new cast. 
Carrie, then 23 years old, auditioned again, five years after his previous attempt. However, he faced rejection once more. It was reported that he didn't even get the opportunity to showcase his material, including his post-nuclear Elvis hybrid impression and his impersonation of Henry Fonda from On Golden Pond. The decision was made by the show's producers and senior writers, Al Franken, Tom Davis, and Jim Downey, who believed that Michaels wouldn't appreciate Carey's act. Fortunately, Carey had started to build a film career alongside his impressionist stand-up act. Once Bitten was released in mid-November 1985 and achieved moderate success at the box office, despite receiving poor reviews. This provided Carey with some backup in case his Saturday Night Live aspirations didn't pan out. My name is Jim Carey. I'd like to do some impressions for you tonight, if you'll just give me a minute. Jim Carrey's decision to remove a filling from two of Lloyd Christmas's front teeth in the film Dumb and Dumber paid off, as it made the character look even funnier on screen. The film received positive reviews from both critics and audiences, and Carey was awarded $7 million for his role and his first MTV award for Best Comedy Performance. However, Carey's personal life didn't fare as well during this time. He struggled with the role of a husband, experiencing constant quarrels, financial difficulties, and conflicts with his busy tour schedules. These factors, along with rumors of a romance with his co-star Lauren Holly, eventually led to the breakdown of his marriage with Melissa. Carey initiated the breakup, reportedly serenading Melissa the day before their sixth wedding anniversary and then leaving for a film shoot in Florida, never to return. He broke the news of the separation to Melissa over the phone. Carey acknowledged his difficulty to live with, admitting, it's hard to live with me. People close to the family confirmed this sentiment, stating that Carey was a great guy on the first date, but had a strong need for both companionship and solitude. In 2018, Carey took on the role of Dr. Robotnik, the main antagonist in the film adaptation of the popular video game series, Sonic the Hedgehog. The film was released in 2020 and received positive reviews. Carey's portrayal of Robotnik was particularly praised, with many considering it one of his best performances in years. It's always great to see actors receive acclaim for their work, especially when they bring beloved characters to life. Following the success of the first Sonic the Hedgehog film, Carrie returned for its sequel, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which hit theaters in April 2022. The film had a fantastic opening weekend at the U.S. box office, grossing a whopping $72 million. This gave Carey the best opening of his career up to that point, which is quite an achievement. Carey's involvement in the Sonic franchise has been a successful venture for him. In addition to his film work, Carey also ventured into the literary world. He published a book called Memoirs and Misinformation in 2020. It's always interesting to see artists explore different mediums and express their creativity in various ways. Now let's talk about Carey's foray into political comedy. During the 2020 U.S. presidential election, Kerry took on the role of Joe Biden, the Democratic presidential nominee, on the long-running comedy show Saturday Night Live, SNL. However, while Kerry is known for his high-energy comedy style, it seems that his portrayal of Biden didn't quite capture the essence of the real-life politician. Some viewers and critics felt that his imitation lacked authenticity and failed to impress. As a result, Carey announced in December 2020 that he would step down from playing Biden on SNL. His time in the role was limited to a six-week deal. Another cast member, Alex Moffat, took over the portrayal of Biden on the show. It can be challenging to capture the essence of a public figure, especially one as well-known as a presidential candidate, so understandably, Carey's comedic interpretation might not have resonated as strongly as hoped. These recent events showcase the diverse range of projects that Jim Carrey has been involved in, from blockbuster films to book publishing and political comedy. It's always fascinating to follow an actor's career trajectory and see how they navigate different roles and creative ventures. Jim Carrey continues to make his mark in the entertainment industry, and it will be exciting to see what he takes on next. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. This picture captures an array of Carrey's moments filled with intense emotions, 
the more cognizance showing his voice echoing through the air as he passionately shouts. This must be a visual representation of his unyielding determination and his refusal to be silenced, which he revealed to Oprah Winfrey during an interview in 1997. But what is it that fueled Carrie's eagerness for such wide vocal revelation? Maybe he has something very interesting to let the world know. Some ask what secrets lie beneath his dynamic on-screen performances and engaging persona. But you will be shocked to know that Jim Carrey speaks about why he sacrificed his career to expose Hollywood. Was that a brave statement born out of a quest to maintain his integrity or a sort of antics? Maybe he's planning to settle for a career in politics. Well, this is truly an enigma you can't wait to unravel. It is full of deeper surprises and revelations. While you enjoy this video, please don't forget to hop into the comment section and tell us what you think about these controversies. Well, isn't that a twist? In April 2022, Jim Carrey surprised everyone by announcing that he was considering retirement from the film industry. Well, I'm retiring, but no. uh, yeah, probably. Are you being serious or are you screwing with me? I'm, I'm being fairly serious, yeah. He expressed a sentiment of having done enough and feeling content with his body of work, stating, I have enough. I've done enough. I am enough. It's not uncommon for actors to contemplate retirement after a long and successful career, as they may feel ready to explore other avenues or simply take a well-deserved break. When asked if he would ever make a comeback, Carey left the door slightly ajar. Jim Carey speaks about why he sacrificed his career to expose Hollywood. He mentioned that it would depend on receiving a script that truly spoke to him, one that he felt was incredibly important for people to see. Carey humorously added that if the Angels were to bring him a script written in gold ink, he might be swayed to continue down the road. It's a whimsical response, but it highlights the idea that the right project could potentially draw him out of retirement. Carey's decision to retire comes after his interview with The Hollywood Reporter where he expressed his initial intention to destroy Hollywood culture when he first entered the limelight. He discussed facing skepticism and disbelief from others, but eventually achieving great success with movies like Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, and Dumb and Dumber. Carey became one of the highest paid and most recognizable movie stars. In addition to his retirement announcement, Carey has been known to make controversial statements about the industry. He criticized the fashion show culture during New York Fashion Week NYFW 2017, stating that he found it meaningless and lacking in substance. I wanted to find the most meaningless thing that I could come to and join, and, uh, and, uh, and here I am. He has also taken a stand against the alleged power dynamics and crimes within the entertainment industry, hinting at a darker truth behind the rumors. Carey's experiences and observations seem to have led him to reevaluate his involvement in the business. He has expressed concerns about corporate influence and a desire for creative control. It appears that he is drawn to explore other avenues of creativity, such as painting, where he can have more personal autonomy. But that's not all. During an appearance on Jimmy Kimmel's show, Carey dropped a bombshell. He boldly spoke about the infamous secret society known as the Illuminati. Can you imagine? He claimed that he was sick and tired of people dismissing its existence. In his typical wistful tone, Carey revealed some juicy details about the society's inner workings. He it is the secret symbol of the Illuminati, and <laughs> you're a part of it, and it is uh, the all-mocking tongue. He said that their main purpose is shrouded in mystery. Fans all over the world were hanging onto his every word. They believed every single thing he said. During a commencement address, Carey hinted at the toll that success in the industry took on him. He admitted that he had lost himself in the pursuit of fame. He wondered who he would be without the trappings of stardom, and if he could speak his mind freely without worrying about people's expectations. And here's where things get interesting. Right after calling out the Hollywood masses as spineless, Carey quit showbiz. It happened right after he criticized the industry for giving Will Smith a standing ovation at the Oscars, even though Smith had just slapped Chris Rock on stage. Carey didn't hold back. 
He claimed that Hollywood had degraded over time, and he wasn't afraid to say it. I was sickened. I was sickened by the standing ovation. I felt like Hollywood is just spineless, en masse. He even shared his radical views on the political landscape, urging people to find common ground and stop doing stupid things. However, amidst all the controversy, rumors began to circulate that Kerry had lost his mind. But in a clarifying interview, he explained that his cryptic statements were meant to provoke thought and challenge societal norms. According to Kerry, as an actor, he delved so deeply into his characters that he realized his character was quite thin to begin with. He even went on to say that the idea of Jim Carrey doesn't exist, but is just a manifestation of consciousness with a name, religion, and nationality attached to it. Carrey seems to have reached a point where he no longer feels defined by fame. He believes that he became famous so that he could let go of that fame. He describes it as a semantic jump, a shift in perception that separates him from the concept of a me. It's a significant departure from how most people perceive themselves. Carey has used his experiences and understanding of depression to raise awareness and help others. He emphasized the distinction between sadness and depression, explaining that sadness is a natural response to certain events, while depression is a deeper struggle with one's own identity and the weight of the world. People appreciate Carey's willingness to openly discuss his battles with mental health as it allows them to connect with him on a deeper level. Interestingly, Carey's social media presence has changed significantly in recent years. He now predominantly shares his political art. He believes that as someone in his position, it's essential to have a buffer, and he channels the uncomfortable aspects of the world into his art. Through his creative expression, Carey addresses societal issues and offers his unique perspective. Jim Carey's journey is one of self-discovery, grappling with fame, mental health challenges, and finding purpose in his art. His experiences have shaped his outlook on life and his desire to use his platform to make a difference. Carrie's story is a reminder that even those we perceive as successful and larger than life have their own struggles and complexities beneath the surface. So, there you have it. A whirlwind of events in Jim Carrey's life. Retirement, Illuminati revelations, calling out Hollywood and sharing controversial views. It's safe to say that Carrie has never been one to shy away from stirring the pot and keeping us entertained both on and off the screen. However, the story has taken a more surprising turn this year. In February 2024, it was announced that Carrie would be reprising his role as Dr. Robotnik in Sonic the Hedgehog 3. This news comes as a surprise, considering his previous contemplation of retirement. It seems that the allure of returning to a character that he breathed life into, and perhaps the overall excitement surrounding the project, persuaded Carey to make a comeback. The decision to step out of retirement and reprise a beloved character like Dr. Robotnik suggests that Carey still has a passion for storytelling and entertaining audiences. It's a testament to the ever-evolving nature of an artist's career and their ability to surprise us with their choices. Fans of both Carrie and the Sonic franchise will undoubtedly be thrilled to see him return to the role. It's a testament to the enduring appeal of the character and Carrie's ability to bring his unique brand of energy and humor to the screen. So, while Carrie may have contemplated retirement and expressed a desire to take a break, the allure of an exciting project like Sonic the Hedgehog 3 seems to have reignited his passion for acting. It just goes to show that in the world of entertainment, you can never predict what surprises lie around the corner. Political and Spiritual Views Jim Carrey's beliefs and practices are indeed quite diverse. He has been an outspoken advocate of the Law of Attraction, which suggests that positive thoughts and visualization can attract desired outcomes. Carrey has shared that during his struggling actor days, he used visualization techniques to manifest work opportunities, he famously mentioned visualizing a $10 million check for his acting services, which he received seven years later for his role in the film Dumb and Dumber. Furthermore, Carey is a practitioner of transcendental meditation, a technique that involves sitting quietly and repeating a mantra to achieve a state of deep relaxation and inner peace. In terms of his political views, 
Kerry has been known to express his support for socialism and has urged the Democratic Party to embrace the movement. He has made statements advocating for saying yes to socialism and rejecting the need for apologies. It's worth noting that Kerry's political opinions are his own and may not align with everyone's perspectives. Kerry has also used his artistic skills to create political cartoons, which he began sharing on social media in 2017. Some of his drawings have been controversial, including depictions of prominent figures such as Sarah Huckabee Sanders and Donald Trump. His artwork has sparked reactions and discussions, both positive and negative, and he has been involved in exchanges on social media regarding his drawings. Carey's political cartoons were showcased in an exhibition called Indignation at the Macaroni Gallery in Los Angeles in 2018. The exhibition featured 108 pen and ink drawings curated from Carey's Twitter feed from 2016 onwards. Jim Carey's beliefs and artistic expressions demonstrate his multifaceted nature and his willingness to engage with political and philosophical ideas in a public manner. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.